Dr. Chang, you uh, were, uh, presented a talk at Glaucoma 360 on new innovations in hacking glaucoma. So that's an interesting title. Could you expound on what your presentation was about? Certainly. We're in the midst of an amazing revolution in artificial intelligence. And hacking, as you know, is working with computers and figuring out what can, problems can we solve using that technology. And finally, we have something called deep learning, which is a new technology within the field of AI that can help ophthalmology in terms of uh, interpreting screening photos or uh, images of eye disease uh, at a level that's been unparalleled compared to previously. Using all the images that we have from OCT to fundus photos, that's really big data. And computers are very good at big data. They can find statistical anomalies within images as good as uh, the expert, most expert human graders these days. And we finally have the papers that back it up in terms of, for example, diabetic retinopathy. Uh, the computers are performing just as well as humans in referable eye disease, the identification of it. Mm -hmm. And we're definitely gonna be seeing that in glaucoma as well uh, when it comes to uh, deciding which may be a glaucoma suspect and, and whether patient needs to be referred. I see this as coming in our future, employing AI to help the physicians augment their practice. How far away from, how far are we from actually seeing this kind of uh, applications in the clinic? It's actually, you know, not there right now because even though the technology is ready, the implementation or integration into the workflow and, uh, you know, which type of patients, uh, what happens if the image quality is not good, hasn't been figured out yet, so I think it'll take you know just a few years in terms of um, you know fulfilling regulatory requirements as well as um, figuring out how it could best integrate with the current medical delivery system because it's so different in different countries and different kinds of clinics. Um, but once that is worked out, then you know humans may come to rely on this just like we have integrated other new technologies in our clinical practice. So as a clinician, if you're looking at this the artificial intelligence and all this other new data that's coming at, how can they implement, how, is it going to be easier for them to implement or a little more difficult? Well, how will it make their job a lot easier? When it comes to new technology, usually it needs to fill a gap. And um, when I think about the rollout of something like AI assisting physicians, you know, physicians are, um, there's not enough of them, there's much more disease, so when you think about areas where there's no access to care, well then that's an obvious place that AI could make a huge impact right away. Now when you already have that world's expert, you know, to treat some patient, then maybe the AI, you know, could eventually be equal or beat that person, but the lower hanging fruit might be kind of a decision support tool to help lesser trained people perform at a level um, you know, that the AI would ensure that everyone would be performing at this certain level in terms of identifying things on a photo, for example. And so um, I see it as uh, slowly working its way into the system, but certainly helping out areas where there's no access to care first. And it might work very well with telemedicine um, by driving down the cost of screening and, and delivering telemedicine care. So how, how far from reality are we? I know, you want me to give you an exact number, right? Well, uh, yeah, a good number, a close number. Um, can. I would say probably within three to five years we should see it as more commonplace. Wow, that's incredible. Thank you, Doctor, for your time.